Now, the second question is, how do we define a line in R squared? Let's see how the inner product is important in that. Well, for example, on this picture, you find here the vector 1, 2, so one unit along the horizontal axis and two units along the vertical axis. Again, the vector u, 1, 2, is written with respect to an orthogonal basis. And I'm asking, what is the line perpendicular to this vector? In, in this case, the green line. So the green line, the, the line perpendicular to this vector, must be some subset of the vectors r which live in r squared. Can you see? So all the vectors cover the entire plane, and I only want those that are along the green line. But if we look at the picture, the vectors that start at the origin and land along the line all make 90 degrees with respect to the pink vector, the 1, 2 vector. So in other words, the property, the characteristic that all these vectors on the green line have is that the inner product with n, the vector 1, 2, must be 0. Can you see? Very important. This is a vector n in pink. This is the n vector. And I want those that the inner product gives us that. But why so? The reason is that, recall, recall what the meaning of the, of the inner product. This is the length, the length of n times the length of r times the cosine between the angles, the cosine. But if it makes 90 degrees, the cosine is cosine of 90, and the cosine of 90 degrees is 0. So by fixing n and by fixing the 0 here, the only r's that su survive this test here are the r's which are perpendicular to n, meaning the r's that lie along the green line. So this property here, this equation, equation whose unknown is r tests it tests each vector of the plane and only those on the green line survive so this is why this set represents the green line here the line perpendicular to one two now let's try to compute this thing and get rather than, uh, rather than an equation let's get the form the form of the vectors that lie along this the green line so let's write this equation, uh, let's solve it. So you have the 1, 2, inner with x, y is equal to 0. But where have you seen this before? We've seen this before. The 1, 2 vector is a matrix. It's a matrix with pivot where? Here is the pivot. And the dependent column, in this case just one entry, because there is one, just one row, and the dependent column. So by choosing, by choosing, remember the previous lectures, by choosing the second column, meaning by choosing y is equal to 1, what x must it be? x must be minus 2, right? Can you see the, the idea? If you choose this one, what sort of x must multiply the pivot to cancel the dependent column. So the answer, the final answer to our problem, is y, x, y, must be, well, it must be minus 2, 1, vector, but you think about it. This is just one solution. All the other solutions are these times some constant c. c is a real number. So essentially, essentially, this, these R's, the R's that survive this test, the R's that survive this test, are also the R's that are, can be written this, in this form. So, so it's a set, so this set of vectors is this set of vectors whose elements have the form C times minus 2, 1, such that C is a real number. Can you see? I want you to see, uh, this is very important. Because essentially what I'm saying, what I'm saying, what I'm saying is this. Call this A, the matrix A. What you see here is the null space of A. Can you see? It's the null space of A. 
So you can see now the, the idea, uh, ideas start to emerge. The idea that you uh, see many times, which these subspaces that you find are all, all correspond to some no space of some matrix. So there is nothing essentially new here compared with previous lectures. What's new is the interpretation. The no space also has, the, has this geometrical meaning. In this case, a line perpendicular to N. And N, well, gives us the matrix A. So let's see another, another example. Now, let's turn our attention and try to define a line in three-dimensional space. In particular, a line in three-dimensional space, let's focus on a specific example. I want the line which is perpendicular to these two vectors, the yellow and pink vector. You find here the three-dimensional space, the x-axis, the y-axis and the z-axis, and the two vectors in question. And I want a line which is perpendicular to both. Well, but a line is nothing more than a set of vectors that start at origin. And I want that set of vectors that, which is perpendicular to this vector and this vector, the n1 vector and the n2 vector. Well, we have now mathematical language to write what you just said in English. So the set of vectors perpendicular to the n1 vector is written like this in mathematical language and the set of vectors perpendicular to that, the pink one, is written in mathematical language like so. Let's just think about it for a moment. The set, let's just focus on the first equation. The first equation is Oh, from all the points in three-dimensional space that point in all possible directions, I want those which are perpendicular to this specific vector, n1. What such set is that? Well, look at it. It's a set or is a plane, right? It's a plane which is perpendicular to it. So that first equation in the system defines a plane. A plane here that contains the origin. It's perpendicular to n1. Can you see? Well, but the second equation tells me something similar. I want the set of vectors which is perpendicular to N2. Let's assume points in this direction. So L, L, uh, it also defines a, another plane. So each one of these equations... See, let's focus on the first first. Is the element U test for all the, se the, the vectors in three-dimensional space are only one those that have that property. Those vectors, well, constitute a plane perpendicular to N1. The second equa uh, uh, equation tells me something similar. It also defines a plane. It filters from the entire thing, filters only this plane. But now if you combine these two equations, if you combine this equation with this equation, what you have essentially is the intersection of the two planes. And the intersection of two planes in three-dimensional space constitutes a line, which is the line that I'm asking here. So let's try to derive uh, the form of the elements, because here we already wrote the properties of that line. But I want more than that. I want the form of the vectors that started the origin and the line of that line. To, uh, to obtain them, we have to solve this system of equations. So I try to solve it by noticing that this is essentially like solving this matrix system here. You can see? N1, 1, 0, 1 here, here, and the 0 here is that 0. And the 1 to 0 here, 1 to 0, is on the second, second row. And the 0 here is that. Now well, let's try to find the solution for this. But we already know how to do this. You just use the elimination method, which uh, I recall you just uses the pivots. It uses the pivots here, in this case, this pivot, to eliminate variables. In this case, let's try to eliminate this variable. How do we do that? Well, the third line, the, the, the second line prime is the old second line minus, minus the first. It gives us that. So 1 minus 1 gives us 0, 2 minus 0 is 2, and 0 minus 1 is minus 1. The zeros remain. 
Then I just divide the second equation by 2. So L2 prime is 1F L2. So you get a 1 here, minus 1F, and 0. Everything is fine. You find here the identity again, which have the two pivots, 1 and 2, and you find here a dependent column. A dependent column because it can be constructed from this column and this column. Having identified these columns, the independent independent columns, I can now easily solve this system. How? Well, let's just choose z to be equal to 1, meaning I pick the I pick the third column, and now let's try to choose x and y to cancel it, because I want the zeros here. Well, if I have in my end the vector 1 minus, one, minus 1f, one what sort of combination of vectors cancel it? Well, it must be minus 1 of the first column and 1f and, uh, and of the second column. Can you see? So the final answer for the solution for this system is x, y, z is equal to minus 1 one F and one. That's it. Very easy. But this is just one solution. There are many others. If I multiply this solution by some constant c, a real number, well, I get the generic form of the elements that live on this line perpendicular to n1 and n2. So essentially, look at the calculations we have just done. Just look at it. Let's call this A. This is A, like now. A. This calculation essentially is the null space of A. So the null space of A is this line. You can see, it's a geometric interpretation. All the elements in the null space have this form. Can you see? So, this is just the, uh, 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 more uh, one step above the previous example, but the idea remains the same. A line in three-dimensional state, uh, in three-dimensional space, is again a null space of some matrix. Now let's keep moving.